Let me read to you a passage from the 11th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 11 to 15. It's the Gospel for Thursday of the second week in Advent Year B. St. Matthew writes, After Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you the truth, among those born of women there has not been anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet, he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. That's from Matthew chapter 11, verses 11 to 15. And what does it suggest to us? Well, let us notice the very high praise that our Lord accorded to John the Baptist. As John's disciples were leaving our Lord, to return to their master who was in prison. Our Lord spoke of John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. John was no ordinary prophet. He was the predicted messenger who would prepare the way for the Lord. Other prophets spoke obliquely of the Messiah to come, such as Deutero Isaiah, who described the suffering servant, or Daniel, who described the Son of Man, or Moses in Deuteronomy predicting the future prophet. But John's announcement was not oblique. He specifically announced to the people that the Messiah was nigh, he was near. Indeed, he said, he was in their midst without their knowing. More than this, he pointed Jesus out as the Messiah, at least to some. For instance, he told this to two of his disciples, as we read in the Gospel of St. John, who immediately followed Jesus and became his disciples. They in turn told others of him and brought them to him. And again, on one occasion, our Lord challenged his enemies to state whether John was from God or not. They knew that if they admitted he was from God, then Jesus would ask why they did not accept John's testimony about him, about himself. So in some sense and in some circumstance, John testified to Jesus also to the leaders of the people. John was the greatest of the prophets because his mission was the greatest, to introduce Jesus as the Messiah. But there is another reason for his greatness. He bore his sufferings with admirable faith. Though his passion was before that of Jesus, it was born in the same spirit. I refer to his sending of his disciples to Jesus to ask if he, if he was indeed the Messiah. It looks as if he was confused by Jesus' actions, puzzled, bewildered. 
our Lord's ministry was developing in a way not at all as he expected. We are conjecturing, of course, but perhaps he wondered if his ministry and what he had announced privately and publicly about Jesus and the arrival of the Messiah had been mistaken. He asked our Lord if he was the one to come. In any case, he bore his sufferings in faith. For this reason, too, he was a very great prophet. But more than anything, his life and teaching points to the one who is at the centre stage of all, Jesus Christ. For this reason, our Lord concludes his words about John by saying, I tell you the truth, among those born of women there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. And our Lord then adds, though, Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So whatever the people had of the treasures and grace of heaven in John and in his ministry is not to be compared with the treasures and grace available to them in Jesus Christ. What Christ in his person and teaching brings far outstrips what John in his person and teaching brought. John was a prophet, indeed the greatest of the prophets. Christ was no mere prophet. He was and is a divine person. This is an extraordinary assertion. It points to a unique and extraordinary fact. There was a man in a particular place at a particular time and he lived out his very human life in a very particular context. He was born, he grew up, he worked and he died. Now this man was literally God. God and man. Nothing then can compare with him. The entire universe cannot be compared with him. And entry into the kingdom of heaven consists in entering into union with him. Our Lord is saying that union with him in discipleship is a far, far greater thing than the following of any prophet, and even than actually being the greatest of prophets. Our Lord is comparing himself with anything or anyone before or after him. Nothing is to be compared with the priceless treasure of Jesus Christ and union with him. Let us resolve to hold on to the person of Jesus and to guard his teaching, making it the guide of our entire life in all its aspects. Our Gospel passage today hints at a passion that John was enduring in prison, a passion that would culminate in his death bearing witness to the truth of God. He points to Jesus not only in his prophetic mission, but in his own passion and death. Let us be led by his witness to take our stand with Jesus and be led entirely by his teaching, a teaching that leads us to take up our cross and carry it in the footsteps of Jesus.